Greetings Midco Seekers, Jeff Weinberger coming at you here in the new year, giving you a new song to work on today. And this one's called At the Codfish Ball. It's one that we um, hopefully will do in the future. We've never really uh, performed it, but we did practice it a little bit and it was kind of fun. I know it's a corny old tune. It's that uh, from a Shirley Temple movie and um, it's kind of old timey music. John Lithgow does a version, Maria Maldar. There's all kinds of great versions out there, but just the same. It's kind of a charming little tune as corny as the lyrics are. So one thing I wanted to say is that there's two chords in it that may be new to you. So that's the main thing I want to zero in on right now. We're going to have a part two of this, so we can cover some other aspects of the tune, like some of those up the neck chords I was playing and uh, some of the more advanced strums perhaps. Plus there's a bridge in the song. I'm not going to do the bridge today. Um, I'm going to focus pretty much on the intro and the verses. But let's learn it as an open chord song first. Uh, it's in C, the way we're doing it. Shirley Temple did it in D flat, which is half a step higher. And that's kind of a pain. We'd have to do all bar chords to play uh, her version. So I'm not going to do that. But C is an easy chord. I don't have to explain that to you. But I won't. I do want to uh, skip to the chord called B flat 7. You'll see that uh, throughout the tune. And that B flat 7, there's a couple of ways to do it. I'm going to show you the hard way and I'm going to show you a shortcut easier way. B flat 7 in its uh, purest form is just barring across four strings with your first finger. We're barring the first fret and then we add our second finger to the C string second fret. That gives us this. B flat 7. And that leads into A7. It's only for two beats that you have to um, hold that B flat 7 so if bar chords make your uh, fingers tired um, or if they're really difficult, then luckily it's only for two beats, so it's not too bad. Um, for those that cannot do bars, or just that's not a chord your fingers are going to let you do, uh, try this. Try There's an easy version, and it's just like a G chord. If you can play G, you can play this B-flat 7. What we do is we take that G shape, move it over a set of strings, and down a fret. So fret number-wise, it goes 1, 2, 1, X. We're just simply not playing our A string. Whether we avoid it by not playing it, we can mute it out so that it doesn't sound, or you can just rest your thumb or your finger on the A string so it doesn't sound using a rest stroke. That's a good way to do it too. I think that I think that's what I do, and that's what happens. Hear that? When you don't mute that A string, it's it's not a pretty picture. So let's uh, try to avoid either playing our A string altogether or figuring out a way to mute it. Uh, either that or you're going to have to do the full full bar chord in order to avoid that. So B flat 7, that's uh, sort of a new chord for some of you, I bet. And then the other chord that's potentially new for you is one called G sharp 7. Although in another guise, you've seen it as A flat 7, like in Walking After Midnight by Patsy Cline and some of the other songs we do. It's not that uncommon, but let's take a look at it. It is 1, 3, 2, three. You do need four separate fingers to play it, so use your first finger, use your third finger, your second finger, and your pinky. And that almost always leads to uh, G7. And um, the way I do that change is I don't do a traditional G7. I do an alternative G7 where I'm just sliding my three fingers down like that. So my G7 in this case is fingered with my third finger, my second finger, and my pinky. Not the usual way, but it's so much easier to transition between those two chords that way. So sometimes taking familiar chords and fingering them in an unfamiliar way actually makes things easier. I know that sounds counterintuitive, like why would I want to do a G7 other than the traditional way? But in this case, it actually facilitates that smooth, quick chord change. So it's worth going a little bit out of your way to save uh, time in the long run and trouble. And so we have our two new chords. I did want to actually show you real quick, before I forget, an easy way to do that uh, G sharp 7, otherwise known as A flat 7. If you can't do that four finger version, if that's just not working for you, do this. Take your G7 and move it up a fret and just avoid your G string. And if you do, that's a perfectly good G sharp or A flat 7. It, um, it totally works. Just mute out that G string, maybe use your thumb to, to do that. and strum away. You can strum all four and you only hear three. You don't hear that ugly that note right there which we kind of want to avoid. That's a note only a mother could love. 
So the um, basic idea with this song is that it has um, kind of a two feel. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And it's generally a piano song. Almost always when you hear people do this, it's uh, a piano driven song. And that one, two, one, two feel is in the, the left hand of the piano. Um, some versions of this feature banjo. And the banjo is uh, plunking away on those beats, one and two uh, also. So um, the perfect strum that we know from past experience from country tunes and other things that are in 2-4 time is the boom chick strum. So you could actually do a boom chick. Just don't try not to make it sound too much like a country tune when you do this. So that on a C chord would be... And that actually works. Next Friday night you're all invited to the dance from 8 to 5. All the fish is still alive or half and above. So that works. Even though we usually think of that as kind of a country strum, it, it definitely works in this context. So that'd be a strong one, the boom chick strum. Anything you can do boom chick on, you can almost always do boom chicka on. So that would be a down strum on the close strings and a down up on the further strings. Which I think of in this case as like the do whack a do. Do whack a do, whack a do, whack a do. Has that kind of sound to it. So down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. That'd be a perfectly good strum. And then if you want something a little more than that, um, you would have to start to talk about up the neck chords, because up the neck chords you can make shorter. Up the neck chords you press and down, and then you release the chord to make it short. It doesn't last very long. And you do that on purpose. That swing style. But we're going to talk about that more in the next video. Uh, the part two of this, we'll talk about how to do those up the neck chords and make it more of a kind of a jazz swing uh, sound and tune. But the last strum I want to go over with you today is a strum you might not have thought would be appropriate for this song, but I found it works really good. And that's the hula strum. The traditional hula strum from Hawaii goes like this. Usually hula is a slower form. It's uh, gentle and swaying and But in this case, we're adapting something that was meant for a different style and adapting it to a, a new style. So if we take the hula strum and speed it up, it sounds something like this. So I find that to be um, a perfectly good strum, and that has a lot of drive and a lot of rhythm to it. As long as you can keep it steady. Don't do the hula strum if you have any trouble keeping a steady beat, or uh, these strums tend to get out from under you. Um, do something simpler. Um, don't attempt to strum that um, physically difficult unless you can maintain it for at least, you know, 8 bars, 16 bars, 32 bars. But that's a good one to practice. The hula strum is this. Down, up. Chuck up. That's all it is. It's four things. Down, up, chuck up. Down, up, chuck up. It is the perfect Hawaiian strum for most uh, hapa haole Hawaiian tunes and also a few traditional ones like aloha oe. That, that would be a great strum. And then this works really good for music of this era. Um, if it's a foxtrot, then, you know, it's a foxtrot strum. If you call this something else, if this is a ragtime tune, that, that would be considered a ragtime strum. So whatever you want to call it, uh, since calling it the hula strum isn't quite, you know, doesn't describe it good in a tune like this. This song has nothing to do with Hawaii, not directly. Um, all right, and so let's take a really basic strum. Let's take our boom, chick, boom, chick, and let's practice a little bit. Let's play that intro, and let's play the um, first verse. Let's just do verse one, and after uh, we do... We'll join in the jamboree at the codfish ball. Boom, boom, boom. That'll be it. We're going to cut the song off there. So that boom, boom, boom. For now, I'm just going to knock on my ukulele. But you could clap or snap or whatever you want to do as long as you do three of something. All right, here we go. With the simple strum, with the boom, chick, boom, chick. 
although I may get carried away and throw a couple other things in there. You guys keep your boom chicks going. Here we go. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Next Friday night, you're all invited to dance from nine to five. All the fish is still alive, we're having a ball. It's summer fair, they're all there, from the herring to the whale. They'll turn out to shake a scale in Neptune's hall. Codfish Ball, first little bit of it. We will do a part two and learn some more about this tune. Let me know if you have any questions, if any of that didn't make sense, if you want to get into more great detail in this song, or anything else, just let me know. Drop me a line and we'll we'll talk about it. All right, Mid Coast Euchres, you take care and Happy New Year to all of you. Bye-bye.